the show. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. You have a fascinating uh, story. You were born in India. You became the first Indian American woman elected to Congress. You moved here uh, alone, I believe, by yourself uh, when you were 16 years old. I did. And uh, went to Georgetown. What was it like uh, being here uh, for the first time at that age? It was a strange experience. I was so young. Um, I had never seen snow before. I hated wearing socks because I'd never had to do that. Yeah. Um, I feel the same way about socks. <laughs> I still don't like to do that. Um, I had a picture of the Taj Mahal on my wall, and somebody in thought, your dorm, like, in my okay. dorm. Yeah, I just went out because I was homesick, and I bought a picture of the Taj Mahal. It said India on the bottom, and then my next door neighbor came in and said, "Oh my God, is that your home?" <laughs> And I thought she was kidding, so I said, no, it's the servants' quarters. The home doesn't fit on it. And she said, oh, my God, are you a princess? I said, yes, but I'm embarrassed to be called Princess Pramila. She bought the whole thing. A week later, somebody came up and said, are you the real-life princess? Oh, uh, wow, how did they get into Georgetown? Um, so uh, I, you obviously, um, uh, as a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, you've been very critical of the president. Have you ever met the president? I really have tried not to. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, probably a good, uh, good idea. Uh, you, uh, you endorsed Bernie in 2016. I did. Uh, which makes sense. As someone who's a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, you've not endorsed anybody yet. What is it that you're looking for? Uh, and, and are you going to endorse, or are you going to just sort of wait it out and see what happens? No, I'm probably going to endorse, but not too soon, because we have 98 members of the Progressive <laughs> yeah. Caucus. Um, and it's a really important thing, I think, for me to just stay back a little bit. But I am looking for somebody who is bold, who is unafraid to take on the special interests, who understands that the inequality that we have today started long before Trump, and that we have to have bold solutions for some of the worst things that we're facing. Climate crisis, inequality, three people in the country, two of whom live in my state, have the same wealth as the bottom 160 million people. Um, so I just think we need somebody who is willing to propose solutions that are uh, match the scale of the crisis. You, uh, Medicare for all <laughs> has been a question in a lot of, uh, at the debates, they've been sort of asking Candace, put your hand up, if you are pro the idea of only having uh, public health care, no private right. insurance companies. Uh, you've introduced a, a Medicare for all bill. What is it? How do you feel like you move this forward? Is it, do you believe it's what the public wants? And do you oh, feel like politicians are hearing that? It is absolutely what the public wants. 70% of Americans want a single-payer health care system. Um, and no, politicians are a little bit behind the eight ball. You know, they're not quite there yet because they've got to take on the insurance companies and the drug companies that are profiting off of people's illness. That is just wrong. Everyone should have health care. It should be a human right. You shouldn't have to pay co-pays, premiums, and deductibles. And when you get sick, you should go to the doctor. And we don't need all these private insurance companies in here charging enormous amounts of money and stopping people from getting health care. You, uh, another issue that's coming up, obviously, in the debates, and, and people are talking about it, uh, these days is immigration. What is the value right now of having someone like yourself uh, and colleagues of yours that are in Congress right now that are immigrants? Is it, it does it add in value in this conversation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, 14 of us out of 535 that are actually immigrants born outside of the United States. And it is a personal experience. I mean, for me, it took me 19 years to get my citizenship. And I know what the system is like. I've worked on immigrant rights as an activist for 15 years before coming here. And I really understand how immigrants are often the scapegoats. And that's, that's true for a long time, but it's certainly true with this president. And so to be able to be there and fight back and show the resilience and the courage and the benefits of immigrants across the country as a member of Congress, but also to be able to talk about the policy has been amazing. You have uh, you've only been in Congress since 2016, is that right? Right. And yet there's this freshman class right now that I, well, you're sort of one of the senior members of. <laughs> well, I guess you can sort of like show them yeah. the ropes, right? You know, right. AOC, Ilhan Omar, uh, right. uh, and uh, uh, Rashid Tlaib. Right. Uh, are you a close knit group, as it seems? Yeah, they're amazing. Um, and, you know, there are only 67 women of color that have ever served in Congress out of 11,000. And so we're a very tight-knit group. I mean, we really, we like to make soup with each other. We like to have <laughs> wine with each other. We like to, uh, you know, just tweet each other out and hold each other up. Um, we go to each other's press conferences. It's really, it's, it's really wonderful Man, there. soup Smart. and wine. <laughs> D.C. is exactly as exciting as I thought it was.
Hey, thank you for making the time. It was wonderful talking to you.